In the Philippines, an airborne operation had been planned. All the weather data was favorable. The day had arrived. C-47s were loaded with paratroopers, and there would be no guesswork where they were going to be dropped. They were furnished with markers for every dropping point. These markers had gone ahead of them. This paratrooper carried a radio beacon hooked onto his belt. It was the ground section of what's called Rebecca Eureka system. His part was Eureka. Equipment redesigned by the Signal Corps for mass production. Without going into technicalities, here's generally how it operated. Our planes were looking for the dropping targets for the paratroopers. They carried the Rebecca Airborne Interrogators, which picked up Eureka's beacon and came in on it. Eureka gave them azimuth and range indication. They came in on the beacon with an accuracy of plus or minus of 200 yards. And their cargo of fighting men unloaded. An objective was taken, not only because these men knew their business, but because there was no guesswork about where they were going to drop. We also aided airborne troops in the ETO. When the going got tough at Bastogne, we fought shoulder to shoulder with the 101st Airborne Division. We helped them hold out until the artillery threw a surprise punch at Von Hanstead. The VT, or proximity fuse. This electronic device detonates a rocket, bomb, or shell on its approach to a target. Used to obtain an air burst above hostile ground troops, it ensures greater casualties than the standard type of time fuse shell. With the proximity fuse, it's not necessary for a projectile to hit a target. All that's required is that it approach within 65 to 100 feet of it. The artillery ammunition was developed under Navy jurisdiction. But we helped the ordinance of the Office of Scientific Research and Development with the BT fuse for aerial bombs and rockets. developed and furnished to the infantry sound ranging equipment, which picks up the sound of enemy guns and calculates their positions. We adapted for the artillery this radar so that it could be used as a mortar locator. Tied together, they spell sudden death to enemy batteries. Radio controlled mines came from us. Selective detonation of water or landmines can be accomplished by means of radio signals. The enemy can't explode the mines unless they know the combination of our frequencies. Operation is as simple as this. Dial a number as on a telephone and... Pinpoint bombing with the Azon bomb came into its own in Burma. With an Azon, a flare is ignited by a delay of fuse eight to ten seconds after leaving the plane. The bomb is then steered by radio, left or right. This radio control was developed by the National Defense Research Committee with our assistance. The Azon was most effective on long, narrow targets where other bombing had failed.
Another radio-guided missile on which we helped develop the radio controls was the television bomb. This bomb has a television camera mounted in its nose. After it's launched, the operator watches a television picture of the target, which is being transmitted from the bomb in flight. Employing radio controls, he steers the bomb toward the target seen on the screen. Looking ahead and to what we may have to fight against in the future, something like this is not beyond the realm of possibility. A television-controlled atomic rocket. The Signal Corps will continue its fight against the unknown. Its contributions to the world of science will continue to further the progress of mankind. As it fought in war, so will it fight in peace. Pro Patria Vigilance.